Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the fourth ever edition of the Okali's Film Room, where Sadiq Tuma and I, my co-host, are going to be breaking down uh, some of OSU's plays against Iowa State this week. I'm Ryan Nowazinski, uh, joined here, as always, as I said, by my co-host Sadiq Tuma. So, Sadiq, uh, obviously this past weekend we saw a very interesting game, a uh, very highly ranked game between Oklahoma State and Iowa State. Uh, first off, I want to know what, what, what you thought of this game and sort of the, the attacks from OSU. I think it was overall just an impressive performance from OSU. Uh, yeah, obviously the score was close at the end, but mm-hmm. late touch to my Iowa State. But overall, it felt like OSU was just in command the whole time, right? Uh, not command like, oh, they're dominating by 30 mm-hmm. points. But it felt like they had a good, really good grip on yeah. this game. Defense, offense was moving. Field position battle was awesome. And I think OSU just was, was destined to win this game. D- totally, yeah. And I, and I completely agree with that. Um, and it co- all came down to so- some sort of... Um, in a way, the way it stayed close was because of plays like this first one we're going to watch here, right? You got Brees Hall, you got a guy who's of tremendous talent, um, and you got some great blocking from Iowa State here. Um, but if you'll roll, if you'll see right here, um, and we'll show you this real quick, is we have a Brees Hall touchdown, and this sort of kept these these kind of plays like this kept Iowa State in the game, kept um, Brees Hall with big numbers like that. But there's sort of more that goes into it, um, and and sort of. Just little tiny mistakes here and there from the defense that, that we'll show you uh, in just a second and, and sort of how this play sort of went down. Yeah, exactly. We start with this play because this is the this is the nail-biter, right? This is yeah. the 66-yard touchdown by Brees Hall off to the left, basically untouched. And the reason I say OSU had such a good grasp on the game is because when you look at plays like this, to me it's just, man, you see the little things, you just eliminate those, and it would be a very different game, right? right? Uh, so first off, you see here, you're going to see Malcolm Rodriguez between the defensive line linebackers. He's kind of shifting over. He's man coverage with Dylan Sainer. You see all across the board, you see man coverage, right? Zero coverage. You got all the guys in the box who are not playing defense, right? Your strong side of the defense, right? Over here, left side, right? That's your strong side. That means you got one tight end over there, right? Malcolm Rodriguez. That's where the defense kind of lined up right now. But there's two things to notice. One, Malcolm Rodriguez. Two, Trey Sterling, who's on the weak side of that ISU um, offensive line. So he's on that right side of it, over here on that corner, right? So as soon as the ball is snapped, it's going to be handoff to Brees Hall, and you're going to see Dylan Sainer, the tight end, over on the left side. He's going to immediately come over and make a block, a backside block on whoever's coming from that right side of the offensive line. So you see that, immediately, first thing you see, Malcolm Rodriguez, he's shifting over, right? Right. Second thing you see, Trey Sterling, he's coming straight down, right? But then scroll back just a second. Look at this lineup. This is built to go to the left, right? You have the tight end over there. You have the running back on the right side. It's really hard to counter and come back to the other side. <laughs> OSU guessed right that the the right in the sense of the direction right. Mm-hmm. They thought the run is going to the right. They had those guys shifting over right. Look at that. Because Dylan Sainer comes over and makes a block, Malcolm Rodriguez is going that way. Trey Sterling is going in. But then look at the mistake on the left side. There's just a big hole. Yeah. There needs to be someone setting the edge right there. Mm-hmm. Right. Simple things. Not setting the edge to just make a tackle but setting the edge to make Brees Hall bounce back inside it to these fantastic tacklers, right? You got these great tackles in Trey Sterling, Colby Harville Peel, right? All these guys, amen. But instead, you leave that left open, and then Brees Hall is just off. Yeah, and you can't even blame Jarek Bernard Converse there. Obviously, gets really blocked uh, and, and really well there, um, but there has to be more guys there to set that edge and, and sort of make apply pressure to Brees Hall in that situation. That's a huge problem that some football teams have, not setting the edge. Yeah. That's, that, that can be so detrimental to a team, especially with a prolific back like this. It's so consequential, and it's also so simple to fix, right? <laughs> it's just a simple little fix, uh-huh. and it's a thing of staying disciplined, mm-hmm. which seems easy, right? It seems like, oh, yeah, just do that. But in game mode, when you see a guy and you're like, oh, I can go get him, yeah. you just lose it, right? You don't even have to make the tackle. You yeah. just got to go over there and force him out of bounds. And that's part of technique. That's part of coaching. And that's mm-hmm. part of discipline. Jim Knowles has done a fantastic job. But sometimes when you have a talent like Brees Hall, when you, all week everyone's talking about, man, this running back's so good. This running back's so good. Mostly because he is so good. <laughs> when you see that and you come to game, you're like, oh, yeah, I got it. We're going to stop him. It's a little bit of little bit of over anxiousness, and this is what happens. Yeah, definitely. And and you look at uh, another guy in that backfield, Brock Purdy, another guy who's so good, right? And right. he was he ended up being so good on the run the other day. And we'll look at this play too. Um, another play, another play that sort of uh, displays so um, sort of the semblance of of why this game was semi close. Um, when you look at Brock Purdy and, and the touchdown he had here. 
um, it's sort of set, put, put things into perspective and, and, and how good of a quarterback he can be in the Big 12. Exactly. We talk about how good he's really one of the best signal callers in the nation. Mm-hmm. And he's not just a passer, but also a runner. Right. Here you're going to see the effects, right? I just talked about how all week they were probably hearing Brees Hall's name, mm-hmm. right? They're talking about Brees Hall, Brees Hall, Brees Hall. He's, he might be the best back in the Big 12, right? That's all you're hearing. And you're thinking, okay, I can get this guy, Brees Hall. Right now, this is earlier in the game, but you're going to see the same effect of someone like Brees Hall, right? You see it again, strong side of the formation to the right, right? You see a defense, again, stacked box mostly, right? It's almost like a cover zero look. And what you're going to see here is a read option, right? Simple. Three tight ends on that right side, right, by the way. Right, exactly. Yeah. And then you got one to shift mm-hmm. over, and you, again, your strong side's uh, still there. And then as soon as the ball snapped, look at that, right? This is the read option. Simple yeah. read for Brock Purdy, right? He sees Trace Ford over there. Trace Ford, again, this is the thing of staying disciplined. This is an easy read for Trace Ford. He has supposed to just stop there yeah. and keep Brock Purdy in his eyes and let Brees Hall go to the left, right? Make Brock Purdy hand it off because you're playing that stack box. Mm-hmm. You have Malcolm Rod- Look at the left side. You have Malcolm Rodriguez wide open, just going right into the hands of a surefire tackler mm-hmm. in Malcolm <clears throat> Rodriguez. Instead, Trace Ford, he gets a little too overanxious. Yeah. He dives right in, and Brock Purdy just pulls it. Simple read. And over there, you got Chase Allen, the tight end. An excellent run blocker mm-hmm. over there one on one, no chance. Brock no Purdy chance. Run Look it at in. that, right there. And and when you're Trace Ford and you are that read key, you are that read defensive end. You're supposed to go through all these reads, right? And you're right. supposed to recognize that. Obviously, usually he can make plays like this, no sure, doubt. and he he is able to recognize it. But like you said, uh, over eagerness there. If you look at the scoreboard or if you look at the uh, clock down there, it's very early on in the game, and stuff like that will happen early on in the games. But my God, like look at look at the it, over it. <laughs> the overpoweredness on this. Look at him; he, he's overextending there and, yeah. and making trying to make uh, do the most right. If he just stays right yeah. there, if he just stays right there, and, and look look at this hole in the left, right? Yeah. Good hole. But Malcolm mm, Rodriguez crashing down. He's right there, sure. and that stop there right there. If you stop it there, mm-hmm. but Trace Ford, all he has to do is stand there. But this is the impact of having someone like Brees Hall, right? Yeah. You want to crash. You want to stop him. You want to get him out of the game, sure. right? You want to eliminate him in his tracks. But Brees Hall, sorry, Brock Purdy is so smart. Mm-hmm. He just tucks the ball, uses his legs, and gets to the pylon. Yeah, what a play from Brock Purdy here. I mean, you look at that. The the quickness, sort of the smart running, not even just quickness, the yeah. smart running Follow from Brock Purdy. Yeah, and, and uh, a great, great performance from him there. Um, but now let's talk, talk a little bit about OSU's offense, right? Sure. And let's talk about the yeah, guy. Yeah, we talked about the mistakes. Let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about why they won. Let's talk about why they won, right? And and uh, obviously this is the counterpunch to that touchdown uh, that you saw from Brock Purdy there. Um, Spencer Sanders is back, um, and he's better than ever from what it seems. Um, and when you look at this play, what you're going to see is you're going to see Cowboy backs involved, um, and, and you're going to see a Jelani Woods utilize that middle of the field. Um, as as some good tight ends can do, and and he does it really well here. And Spencer Sanders, the the, the way to, to be able to go through these reads and, and recognize that is fantastic, and we'll see that in just a second. And OSU has been using a lot more twelve personnel mm-hmm. this year, right? What does that mean? One running back, two tight ends, right? You see them right here, lined up in line. And what you're going to see here from OSU is three seam routes, right? Or two seam routes from the two tight ends: Logan Carter, Jelani Woods, then Tylen Wallace, and just a straight nine. Yeah. He's just going straight down the field. Braden Johnson on a little curl route 10 yards out, right? Now, what Iowa State is playing here is a cover three cloud, right? What that means is typically cover three, you have the two linebackers just bailing immediately, playing deep coverage, one deep safety, and then four guys underneath, right? Mm-hmm. What you see here, it's a little bit of a shift. It's mostly that, but this corner closer to Zon Talon Wallace, Anthony Johnson, the guy who got stiff armed, <laughs> he, he's just supposed to stop there, right? In that curl flat, he's playing that short game. The corner on the other side, uh, TJ Tampa, I believe his name is, he drops all the way back. The cor- uh, the safety in the middle, Arnold Azuna, he just supposed to drop straight back. And Lawrence White down here near Thailand, he just drops straight back, right? But And you're going to see it right here, right? The three guys, right? You see them near the 20-yard mm-hmm. line right there, right? But here's what you need to watch. Watch number four, right? In the yep. middle, right? Instead of just dropping straight back, watch just exclusive what he, what he does. You see him? He's shifting to Logan Carter. Wow. Right? And that's that's exactly where you see the problem, right? Mm-hmm. You do that, you're leaving that mm-hmm. that backside open. Because if he just drops back normally, then there's two seam routes, right? You see yeah. Logan Carter. You see Jelani Woods. You, you see these two seam routes. But if he just drops straight back, mm-hmm. then you have TJ Tampa on the other side who's going to shift down onto Logan Carter. Yeah. Because you see right here Greg Eisler at the safety. He goes onto Braden Johnson. Mm-hmm. And you're probably wondering, over here you got Lawrence White. Why doesn't he jump onto Jelani Woods? He's on him the whole time, right? You watch his head. He's looking at Jelani Woods, looking at Jelani Woods. 
Shifts last second. Why? You got Tylen Wallace. <laughs> that is the impact of having a Tylen Wallace. Of course. What happens? You have a wide open Jelani Woods, catches a touchdown. A guy like Tylen Wallace, just his talent alone can can open things up on this offense. And you'll look at it too. I mean, you got to p- play with your head on a swivel out there when you're on defense, right? You got to recognize these things. You got to drop straight back. Um, and and I'm just going to be honest with you right here. You got to drop back and, and, and recognize. I, I know Logan Carter's pretty darn good, but. Jelani Woods is, is probably the best uh, cowboy yeah. back there, especially route running wise. And, and I, I think, have to think it's just a busted coverage. Because probably. If you have all, all this entire zone defense, because you saw the linebackers as well, right? You saw the let's put it up here. You see the you see Orion Vance. So this isn't your typical four man front. You got Orion Vance, the middle linebacker here, who's playing more of a QB spy, right? You see him right there. Sure. But you see Jake Hummel, Mike Rose, Greg Eisner to that side. You see the four guys underneath, right? Right around that twenty five yard, thirty five, twenty five yard line. Excuse me. You see them all playing that little zone right and that's the job of the outside linebackers they hold on to that seam route then they pass it off to the safety sure. right that's what you're supposed to do and you see all the eyes are on on spencer sanders which is why i think it's just busted coverage because you got number four over there right onto logan carter he's playing man when he's not supposed to mm-hmm. and that's why i think jelani Woods just gets wide open right busted coverage it, it looks like a busted coverage 101 um and th- these th- these kinds of plays right here is why OSU uh, won the other day. Obviously, there wasn't buzz coverage all day, but just prolific offense from the Cowboys. And uh, we will see that potentially against this Texas team going forward. We will have all that coverage for all of you out there. Thank you for once again tuning in to The Film Room.